Hi, I'm Alina Eisenhower, and today we're going to be making a double chocolate cookie. The first thing we're going to do, like any other cookie, we're going to start is the creaming method. So we're going to start by taking our butter, and I have four ounces of unsalted butter that I've left to soften at room temperature, and then four ounces of vegetable shortening. I prefer to use a trans fat free shortening, which, believe it or not, Crisco actually is. And you can also find some other um, all natural brands out there. We're going to get those going in the mixer and to that add our sugars. I have four ounces of regular granulated sugar, which is half a cup, and also the same amount, half a cup of light brown sugar. We're going to get all that going in the mixer together and turn it on low, slowly first so we don't wear it. I'm going to cream that together until it's light and fluffy. While that's creaming, I'm just going to crack my eggs. You always want to crack your eggs into something rather than directly into your bowl that you're mixing just in case you get a shell in there because that's an extra crunch we don't want. So I have my two eggs. This is almost good. I'm just going to turn it up a little bit and let it mix a little bit more. And that's about good. A really important step when you're making cookies or cake batter is to always scrape down your bowl as much as you can. There's really no such thing as scraping it too much. Just to make sure everything's really evenly mixed and you don't end up with kind of streaks or clumps in your batter. So now that I have this all scraped down, I'm going to turn it back on slow and I'm going to add my eggs one at a time just so they get incorporated. Again, if you add them all at once, your batter tends to separate and it's hard to get it back into a smooth consistency again. Another little trick you want to remember too is when you're baking, it's really important for all your ingredients to be room temperature so that they all again are going to come together as a nice batter. If I was using cold eggs, it would make the butter start to seize again. It might get a little bit lumpy and isn't going to move, uh, mix together as smoothly. So one egg's in, I'm going to add my other egg. Let that mix for another second. It's almost completely mixed. Now I'm going to add in my cocoa powder. The reason I'm adding it here is, is by mixing it in with my eggs and sugar before I have all the other ingredients. And actually, I'm saving myself a step. I don't have to sift it because the thickness and the coarseness of the sugar and the butter is just kind of smooth the cocoa powder all out and let it all get mixed in together really nicely. So next, we're going to add our honey. Honey is one of the interesting ingredients in these cookies. It's what makes them soft. The great thing about this cookie, they work really well for ice cream sandwiches. They're also addicting just to eat them on their own. Is because they're soft. They're like a, a soft baked chocolate chip cookie. One of the things that makes them soft is the honey. The other is that they have an extra egg in them. For the amount of cookie dough that we're making, most recipes would only have one egg and these have two. And I'm going to add my vanilla with that. And then we're going to turn that on and let it mix again just for a minute until it's all really well mixed together. Okay, so we've got all of our wet ingredients in the bowl, the sugar, the honey, the butters. And next we're just going to add our dry pretty much all at once. That's the great thing about cookies. You don't really have to worry about alternating any of your ingredients. I'm going to add maybe half of it only because I don't want to wear it. I could add it all at once, but in this size mixer that might be tragic. <laughs> So that's just about mixed it's to the point of being just combined. I don't want to over mix it. Now I'm going to add in the good stuff. I have two cups of mini chocolate chips. These are dark chocolate, which I prefer. You could use milk chocolate if you can find them, but I think I like the, the darkness and the richness in a double chocolate cookie. And it's a lot. Two cups is a lot, but we're making a super chocolate cookie, so it should be a lot. The other extra ingredient that I like to add is cocoa nibs. These are roasted cocoa nibs, which you can find at specialty food, uh, food stores now. You can actually find them online too. If you can't find them, not a big deal. You can leave them out. Another way to get a similar flavor profile in the cookie would be to add a little bit of um, ground instant espresso, maybe a tablespoon to the recipe, and that would kind of add that same like, extra bitterness and a little bit of depth to it. But the cocoa nibs are really fun if you can find them. I'm just going to dump those right in there too. And that's it. All we have to do is mix this to come together and we're ready to scoop and bake. So now that our batter is all mixed together, we're ready for the good part, scoop and bake. Well, the best part is eating them, but this gets us closer. 
So I'm using here um, an ice cream scoop. It's about an ounce and a half. You can use any size you want. Sometimes I'll use a really big one to make giant cookies, especially for ice cream sandwiches. But um, a lot of times I'll use a smaller one because I can eat more. <laughs> and an ice cream scoop is just a nice trick. It's a lot better than using spoons. You could use two spoons if you don't have an ice cream scoop, but they really come out so neat and uniform and nice and round when you use an ice cream scoop. You want to give them a little bit of rum and space them apart. I alternate because they're going to spread considerably. They're going to about double in size when they bake. So once we get them all on the sheet, then you're just going to very lightly press them down, not too much, because again, they really do spread. So I'm just going to flatten them slightly. And that's it. And then they're going to go into a 325 degree oven for about 10 minutes. I always check them about halfway through. After five minutes, you really want to check, make sure they're cooking evenly, maybe rotate your pan, because I haven't found an oven yet that is actually even, even the latest technology. They say it is. I don't know who they're kidding. So you're going to put this in, bake them for your 10 minutes, take them out. When they're just set, you might be tempted to think that they're not cooked, but you don't want to overbake them, because then you'll lose that nice, soft consistency. So here the cookies are. They've just come out of the oven. It's hard to tell. It's not like a regular chocolate chip cookie. You can't really judge them by color. So you want to look for the fact that they flatten. They kind of, you can see, they've cracked a little bit all the way across the top. And they look dry, but they're going to still feel a little bit soft. And then again, because this is a soft cookie, even when they're done, you can see they bend and break. They don't snap. And that's because it's a nice, soft cookie. Somewhere almost between a brownie and a cookie, which really isn't a bad thing.